What's good all my stock market homies, it's your boy Kevin. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about diversifying stock market portfolios. Is it a good thing? Should we be implementing diversification in our personal investing? Or should we be going all in in our high conviction stocks? This is kind of a touchy subject. Some people say, oh, you need to diversify. It's smart to diversify. Grandma always said, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And then you have the other side of the table. They say, you have a high conviction stock. You need to put most of your money in those high conviction stocks. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at the great Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time. And we're going to be looking at an interview that he did where he spoke on diversification. I think this is a very important topic. And if you want to be successful in the stock market, you need to have a strategy that works and it works for your goals. There's different goals. Are you trying to be aggressive or are you trying to be more conservative? Maybe you're older. This is what we're going to be breaking down in today's video. So you're going to want to stay tuned. But before we get started, everybody go ahead and destroy that like button for me as that like button is not our friend. Every like on this video will send the S&P 500 up by one point. All right, so what is diversification? A dumbed down definition of diversification would be, for example, you have $10,000. A diversified account or portfolio would take that $10,000 and spread it out over 20 different stocks or so. So you would have 5% of 20 different stocks that would make up your portfolio. An undiversified portfolio may put that entire $10,000 into one stock. Let's see what Warren Buffett says about diversification. Roll the tape. We think diversification is as practice generally makes very little sense for anyone that knows what they're doing. Uh, they, diversification is a protection against ignorance. I mean, if you want to make sure that nothing bad happens to you relative to the market, you own everything. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that, that is a perfectly sound approach for somebody who, who does not feel they know how to analyze businesses. If you know how to analyze businesses and value businesses, it's crazy to own 50 stocks or 40 stocks or 30 stocks probably uh, because there aren't that many wonderful businesses at, that are understandable to a single human being in all likelihood and, it, and to have some super wonderful business and then put money in number 30 or 35 on your list of attractiveness and, and forego putting more money into number one just strikes Charlie and me as, as, as madness. And it, it, it's conventional practice and it, it, it may... Uh, you know, if all you have to achieve is, is average, uh, it it's, uh, it it's, uh, may preserve your job, but it's, it's a confession in our view that you don't really understand the businesses that you own. Um, you know, I base, I mean, as on a personal portfolio basis, you know, I own one stock, you know, it, but it's a business I know, it, and, and it leaves me very comfortable. <laughs> uh, so, you know, do I, do I need to own 28 stocks in order to, you know, have proper diversification, you know? And, uh, be nonsense and within Berkshire I could pick out three of our businesses and I would I would be very happy if they were the only businesses we owned and I had all my money in Berkshire now I love it the fact that we can find more than that and that we keep adding to it but three wonderful businesses is, is, is more than uh, it's more than you need in this life to do very well and uh, uh, the average the average person isn't going to run into that. I mean, if you look at how the fortunes were built in this country, uh, they weren't built out of a portfolio of 50 companies. They were they were built by someone who who uh, identified with a with a wonderful business. Coca-Cola is a great example. A lot of fortunes have been built on that. And there aren't 50 Coca-Colas. You know, there aren't 20. If there were, it'd be fine. We could all go out and diversify like crazy among that group and and get results that would be equal to owning the really wonderful one. But you're not going to find it, and uh, and the truth is, you don't need it. I mean, if you, if you have a really wonderful business, is very well protected against against the vicissitudes of the economy over time and 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 the competition. I mean, you know, we're talking about businesses that are resistant to effective competition, and 
three of those will be better than 100 average businesses. At, uh, uh, and, and they'll be safer, incidentally. I mean, uh, they, there is less risk in owning three easy to identify wonderful businesses there, than there is in owning 50 um, well known big businesses. So it's pretty obvious that Mr. Warren Buffett is not a big fan of diversifying. His take on it is that, sure, if you don't know what you're doing, spread your money out over multiple stocks. But if you have an advantage, if you think you have an advantage in the market, and advantages are very hard to come by, right? There are very smart people in the stock market. There's, they're not playing games. People are here to take your money. And if you have an advantage, that is rare, and you need to use it. If you think your high conviction stocks are undervalued, they're cheaper today than they will be tomorrow or a year from tomorrow, then you need to load the boat on those high conviction stocks. And I do agree with that, but there are some exceptions and we need to talk about some of those exceptions. First of all, if you're old, let's say you're 40 years old and you're just now getting started investing and I'm sure some of you guys are like that. You didn't get started investing at a young age. You're trying to catch up. Maybe you have kids that are about to go to college and you're trying to save up and pay for their college then I think loading the boat on your high conviction stocks is not the right way to go. I think you're better off being more conservative. You're older. You're trying to save up for retirement. You only have maybe 15 or 20 more years to invest before you need to retire. I think it's probably better in that situation to just invest in something like index funds or diversify and put maybe 5% into individual stocks and to be very diversified. But if you're young, if you're somebody like me who's 30 years old, you still have a long time to go before you're that age where you're ready to retire, I think Warren Buffett is 100% correct. And if you have an advantage, you don't spread your money out on low conviction stocks, you buy the stocks that you see the most potential in because you can afford to take risk, you're young. 20 to 35 years old, I think we should be taking more risk. And as you age, you become more diversified. In my own personal investing, I see a big advantage in number one, solar. I think solar is going to be absolutely massive. And I think it's kind of going under the radar. And once investors realize that solar is going to be huge, a huge trillion dollar industry just in the United States, People are going to be trampling over each other, trying to get invested in solar. So I see a big advantage in solar. I also see an advantage in hybrid. I think hybrid is going to be the winner over the next decade, even more so than EV. So I'm attacking solar and hybrid stocks right now, and I'm less diversified than most people would be, but I'm young. And I'm able to, this is expendable money. If I lose it, I'm not going to lose my house. If I lose it, I'm still going to be able to feed my kid. But I don't think I'm going to lose it. I think I have an advantage. And I'm attacking that advantage. We have to attack the advantage. You're dealing with hedge funds. You're dealing with guys who went to MIT. They're geniuses. These quants. They are smarter than you. They are smarter than me. So when you have that advantage... It's very rare, maybe once in your investing career, will you actually have an advantage that you've found and that you can exploit. You have to take advantage of it, no pun intended, and you have to attack. And that's what I'm doing here. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I lose this money. But we're young, we can take risk. And I think that's what Warren Buffett was getting at. I don't think he's telling a 50-year-old man to go load the boat on Tesla stock. Because if that 50-year-old man wants to retire in 10 years and Tesla, something crazy happens, you throw one, you only have one dart, something bad is much more likely to happen, right? There's obviously more risk when you're putting all your capital into fewer stocks. But if you're young, why not take that risk and why not attack the market? You know, your more conservative viewpoint on this would be to diversify, put three to five percent in each stock and then just spread it up, spread out your capital over those stocks and yes there is merit to that there's less risk in doing that 
but also you're missing out. If you really do have that advantage, you're missing out on that opportunity. But here's the thing. How do you really know if you have the advantage? You have to put in the time, the work. If you're new to investing, you should probably be diversified. If you're new to investing, you don't know how to evaluate a company and you really don't know if you have an advantage or not, you're probably better off buying index funds or diversifying. You know what else you should diversify in? And that's brokers. Right now, M1 Finance is one of the best long-term brokers out there. They've partnered up with the channel. They're giving you guys some free money. So diversify your brokers. Get it signed up with M1 Finance. Link in the description and get your free money when you sign up. All right, so that's going to wrap the video up, guys. Just wanted to talk about diversification. It's a touchy subject. Some people live by it. Some people say it's stupid. Let me know what you think in the comments. What do you guys think about diversification? How much are you will? What percent of your portfolio are you willing to put in each of your investments? Let me know down below. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until next time, peace.